Okay, thank you so much for joining me today, partners and guests. My name is Rita Ashen, and in our new consumer community, I'm the rank of president. Uh, I'm also an ambassador, and an ambassador is a, one of the representatives. Uh, normally, we represent a big region, like, for example, I represent uh, Australia. Uh, but we are required to work with all the countries around the world. So I, I do a lot of roles, uh, but I do like the role of educating people about cryptocurrency, but more so about blockchain related technology. So let's kick off. And let's look at our blockchain. So how did we get to our blockchain? Well, first of all, we had a crypto unit program that we launched over a year and a half ago on the 31st of March in 2019. And what we did is we started off with an amount of funds. Uh, it was profits that we took from one of our very first projects, Skyway Innovative Transport. And with that, what we did is we purchased some assets and started our first global investment portfolio as a company. Um, now, what a company does is we sell education packages and every single month, what we do is with 40% of those sales, we put them back into the global investment portfolio and we purchase more assets. So this happens month in and month out. And over a year and a half now, we've been able to grow that portfolio uh, that started with the launch of the program around about $62 million worth. And now uh, the value is just under 500 million worth of assets, but the company's valuation itself is worth $11 billion. So massive, massive increase. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to be part of such a great community doing some great things. Now we have in our global investment portfolio, these main assets, we have many, many others, but these are the main ones. And we have interest in five gold mines, uh, as I said, uh, the innovative transport, which is mainly what the global investment portfolio started out with. Basalt fiber production, diamond production, film industry, real estate and stocks and cryptocurrency. Um, now, I'm not sure if any of you went to India. Let me know in the chat if you did go to India and uh, when we were at our conference last year we got to see a trailer of the movie called Dragon Man and uh, I thought it was a great trailer and we even got to meet the character at the Indira Gandhi Stadium in New Delhi. He was walking around taking pictures with the partners and with the kids that were there and I thought that the trailer was absolutely incredible but this year at Aventi a year later uh, they've put so much more special effects and the trailer now looks uh, what I thought was kind of Power Rangers last year. And when I saw it this year, it was like Marvel Comics, you know, it was really exciting. So a lot has gone into the development of that film. And, you know, we're going to be a community that says, hey, you know, that film that's doing really well. Yeah, we were the ones that brought that film to the masses. So very exciting. Now, our crypto unit blockchain, uh, our blockchain operates on what we call the EOS engine. So it's not an EOS blockchain. Or well, what the company have done is they've got together with EOS and they have uh, signed some sort of an agreement for us to be able to copy their, I call it recipe, you know, copy the recipe of the EOS blockchain. Uh, that blockchain is the fastest blockchain in the world in terms of validating transactions. And they do it on a consensus algorithm. And that just means the way we agree to do things, very fancy words for simple things uh, called delegated proof of stake. So proof of stake is different. Um, delegated proof of stake is uh, separate from just proof of stake. So what is delegated proof of stake? Uh, first of all, let's look at proof of stake. Uh, it's when you are staking some of your tokens and you expect someone to check your transactions. Well, they're not going to do that unless you stake some tokens, right? Because they want to know that if they're going to do all this work, that they're going to get paid. Okay, so we stake our tokens and then we have the people that are checking our transactions. 
we call them in this case, we call them block producers, and the block producers will do their work and check the transactions for us, much like a bank teller and a bank manager would do their work during the day. This is what we want the block producers to do as well. Now, delegated just means that as a community, we are going to delegate uh, the people who are looking after our blockchain. And in this case, it's 21 block producers. Right, and block producers aren't normal people like you and I. Normally, they're big corporations, uh, corporations that may um, have access to a massive server and the resources that we need to run a blockchain. Now, let's talk about the programming language, just touch on it a bit. Um, I was told that the programming language C and C++ is quite an antiquated language. It's um, quite old, and uh, but there's some pluses to it as well, pluses and minuses. The minuses are that it takes a long time to write this particular code, right? A long time to write it, uh, but on the other end, uh, what happens for the consumer is they get an experience that is super fast. So uh, if you think about programming languages, uh, there are languages such as Python, a language as you may have heard called Java, JavaScript. Some of these languages even look a bit like English uh, and they would be able to write maybe a couple of lines of code and then press a button, right? With C and C++, you have to write so much more lines and lines and lines and lines and lines of code just to do the same function, like for example, press a button, right? So the reason, um, and this is what I think is so great about our company, even though it takes a long time to write this code and to have these things shown to us on the blockchain and shown to us in our websites, they do so because on the experience of the customer on our side, when we press a button, things happen straight away, right? They happen in, you know, a smidgen of a second. I'll give you an example. If you're transferring funds from your back office and you are in the wallet and you press transfer, as soon as you put that, hit that transfer button, boom, you get the email pretty much straight away. A second later, it, it arrives in your Gmail, right? And then the moment you copy that code and put it in the box and you press enter, it's disappeared from the wallet. It happens so fast. There's no lag time. And uh, that's what's so great about this programming language C and C++. So a lot of things we want them to change in the back office. But I guess now that we know that they use this older style language, um, now we can be a little bit more patient when we know that we want things implemented or changed in the back office. We know that they're working really hard to do that for us. Now let's talk about block generation time, half a second. Um, look at the blocks in front of you and think about each block being filled up with transactions. You can think about a block as perhaps a ring binder or a manila folder and think about the transactions. There's lots and lots of transactions on different pieces of paper, right? To give you a bit of a visual. When we're talking uh, Bitcoin blockchain, it takes about 10 minutes for them to verify uh, the transactions in a block of the Bitcoin blockchain, right? 10 minutes. So this isn't a very efficient way that we could pay as a payment gateway in places, in a physical um, place like at, the, at Coles or at Woolworths, you know, at Pack and Save, at the BP service station, at a cafe. Because if we had a Bitcoin card and we swiped the card at the cafe, uh, we would end up having a queue of people because it takes 10 minutes in order for them to verify all the transactions in their block, one of which transaction is ours, right? So we'd have a queue um, queuing up. So that's not a good idea, like moving forward in the long run. You couldn't have Bitcoin as an um, option to pay uh, with your card. Now, let's think about Visa MasterCard, right? We use that right now. Uh, we swipe our Visa MasterCard at the grocery store, at the fruit shop, at the butcher, wherever we buy. And in a physical store, we usually wait about two or three seconds. Okay, so for Visa MasterCard, uh, for them to verify their transactions is about two or three seconds. 
and they verify approximately 2000 transactions each second. Now the EOS blockchain and our crypto you know, blockchain are very fast blockchains and our one can verify a block in half a second. So it's not even one second we can verify a block and it's half a second. And do you know how many transactions in one block? 10,000, 10,000 transactions in one block that can be verified in half a second. So we absolutely smash Visa and MasterCard, right? So this moving forward is fantastic news for us. I love the way they really are looking forward, looking ahead to the future uh, for us in terms of how we want to purchase. So we could have a, a crypto unit card and we could go to these physical places and swipe our card in future uh, because we know that the transaction will be verified faster than MasterCard and Visa. Half a second and we're out the door. So this is perfect for us uh, and great job for the IT team on using and choosing to copy the EOS blockchain. When we are transferring our crypto unit tokens, any of our tokens, there are no commissions on that. So we're free to send peer to peer. I can send to Dallas, uh, I can send to Lynn and it won't cost me a thing. Now let's talk about tokenomics. We have a native token to this blockchain and it is called UNTB. Uh, the ticker UNTB, or sometimes we call it the identifier. It means unit, token of blockchain and it's accurate to four decimal places so it could be 13.1234 right uh, four, four decimal places so four digits after the dot now the emissions are going to start this year so which means they're going to be created and uh, they are going to be created and dispersed for approximately 10 years ending in march 2030 UGPay Group. Now, let me know in the chat, those of you who haven't visited this website yet, it's called UGPay Group. And if you haven't, go ahead and write UGPay.group in the browser in your address bar, and you will be taken to this link. You'll recognize this gentleman looking a little confused. Uh, there's a couple of tabs that you can click on. Now, the gold login button is disabled at the moment because we don't want anyone registering under UGPay Group until we've registered, right? <laughs> we want to get all of our people through uh, the registration process of UGPay Group uh, before we let all the masses and all the public come in. Um, so it was a good step for them to um, disable that. But you can click on the white paper tab and download load the white paper and look. Uh, you can look into our security token, which is called WCRU, World Crypto Unit. And the white paper is available in about six different languages. Now, there's another tab for you to press, and it says ECC. The company is registered with the ECC, the Security and Exchange Commission in the USA. When you press on that button, you will actually be taken to their website. Okay, so you'll be taken to their website. So you'll see it and you'll probably think you're still in our website, but it's actually a link to go directly to them. Uh, so it'll look a bit like this, this little blue insert here when you click onto that page. Uh, now, the security token, the WCRU, from when you first acquire it, however you're going to acquire it, uh, you may exchange or should, let me say convert, that's the better word, you may convert your tokens to get the security token, or you may purchase it from the back office of the UGPay tab. Uh, however you acquire it from the moment you do, it is in a frozen state for 365 days. After it's um, 365 uh, days are up, it will then go into some sort of a defrosting or thawing out process. And what will happen is every single month, well, it's not month, it's actually every 30 days would be the correct thing to say. Every 30 days for six lots, you will get released 1%. So 
let's do the math. If you had, if um, you purchase from UGPay in the future some security tokens, let's say about 10,000, so we can do some math here. And after one year, that is your freeze period. 30 days after that one year, you will get released to you, and this is a calculation we're going to do, 10,000 times 1%, which is 100 security tokens. So you will get 100 released to you 30 days later, 30 days after that, another 100, 30 days after that, another 100 for six times, right? And then the next lot of six times, look in the yellow, you will get 1.5% every 30 days. So let's do the math on that. 10,000 times 1.5%. So now you'll get 150 released to you every 30 days for six consecutive times. After that, you'll get 2% every 30 days, six times. After that, 3% every 30 days, six times. And the last lot of installments there will be 11 months worth, or should we say 11 times, you will get 5% every 30 days. So what does that come out to be? 10,000 times 5%, you will get 500 every 30 days, 11 times. And that will be your full portfolio which was the initial package that you bought from UG Pay tab, and it gave you 10,000 crypto units. And it would take all of that time that you see there down the bottom of the page. All of that time is four years from start to finish, right? Start to finish, and you have your whole portfolio released to you in four years. Now, let's look at our blockchain tokens. We have four of them. Were you surprised that we had four? Uh, because I was pleasantly surprised, you know, we all expected just to have the second token here in the picture, the crypto unit token, but uh, things changed and now we have this array of tokens that we can choose from. Let's talk about the crypto unit token first, the second token in this picture. This was supposed to be our security token, right? But something happened along the way, along the journey, and we had some bad players uh, that actually copied us. And then we, it was kind of marred, so we didn't want to use CRU anymore. They'd already registered, uh, they'd listed this on the blockchain, on the Ethereum blockchain already, and kind of spoiled it for us. And uh, then we had another number of other websites pop up as well and start selling the token. People were actually buying as well. So we knew that this was not the way we wanted to go. So the company went a bit undercover here and they started to move their sites from CRU uh, to WCRU to be the actual security token. So moving forward, CRU now will not need a uh, 80 billion issued. We're only going to issue 35 billion. 30 billion, which are practically what's already been issued now in the back office uh, to our community, a number of ways, you know, some of them were in the packages and a lot of them were given as bonuses. Uh, now about 30 million has already been distributed. We still have 5 billion that we are going to give out. 2 billion is going to be to thank the early investors, those that were in the very first Skyway Innovative Transport uh, project they will be thanked by sharing 2 billion crypto units as a thank you, um, as a gratitude gift from our CEO, Andre Haratov. Uh, now, if you're one of those people as well, you can get part of that special gift by just making sure that you're fully verified. And that has to be done by the end of tomorrow, everyone. Uh, 23.59, 30th of November, Moscow time. Okay, so please make sure that you reach out and grab people uh, that you know that haven't um, completed their either verification and you also have to be a VIP member. Uh, if not a current VIP member, have at least made one payment towards the VIP membership. Okay, and then you qualify. 
Uh, also, go and activate the CRU tab so you are ready to receive your gifts. Uh, that will make it easier. Uh, so, and then, uh, so that takes care of 32 billion crypto unit tokens. The other 3 billion crypto unit tokens are going to be issued for the crew staking. Okay, so who is doing staking in the back office at the moment? Uh, just let me know with a yes and I'll check the chat. I certainly am. I'm doing uh, staking at the moment, so let me know if you are. Okay. Okay, so the other 3 billion are going to be left for crew stake. Okay, so anyone that stakes moving forward, uh, they will have part of that 3 billion as the reward. Once that 3 billion has already been allocated through crew stake, then crew stake will be no more. Okay, so it's only 3 billion that's allowed for crew stake. So let's look at our security token. World Crypto Unit, we're going to issue out 80 billion security tokens. This is what we wanted to issue out in the first place. And that is going to be split up into, and I'll explain it soon, um, some different release periods. 35 billion for one, one release um, time frame and 45 billion for another. We'll go over it shortly. Uh, but the WCRU, uh, like I said, the company value is 11 billion dollars and that is also represented with our security token so very exciting massive value now our untb the third token along the blue one this is our unit token of blockchain uh, it's a utility token so it's going to have a lot of functionality and so i do believe it's going to be quite a wanted token people will need to purchase it for some real basic things on our blockchain like powering up the wallet Right, and any kind of transactions that we need to do, we're going to have to power that uh, wallet up with UNTB. Now, that is going to have a start price on the exchange of one cent. Now, they're going to be issued eight, just over eight billion. I look at the number there eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, very clever <laughs> over 10 year period. So, it's going to end uh, the last. UNTB is going to be created in 2030. Uh, now, so a utility token, it's going to pay for lots of bills. Think of a, a, a builder that's just completed a new house, right? He hands you over the keys, but there's no utilities connected. There's no water, uh, the, the lights, the electricity is not connected yet. Um, so no power, no phone lines, nothing, just an empty house. Well, a blockchain will be like that too without uh, plugging in its utilities as well. We need maintenance, we need servers, uh, we need lots of things that we have to pay for uh, to function our blockchain and we will be paying with our utility token UNTB. Let's look at USDU. I really enjoyed seeing this as part of our uh, tokens on the blockchain, part of our little portfolio there. Uh, so USDU is a stable coin and a stable coin actually has some sort of collateral um, to, to make sure that that value of the coin stays the same. So for example, if a company is paying some dividends, say a million dollars worth of dividends, they also have to put a million dollars in a bank account somewhere to stabilize that coin to say yes, uh, this is the coin that we're issuing and this is the amount so here it is in our bank account uh, so the great thing about that is it will keep that coin stable so it won't dip under one us dollar right it can go up in value but it can't go down because the collateral is there in the bank so collateral can now um, i hear companies are using lots of different assets. So not just fiat dollars, not just money in the bank. They're also using precious metals, gold and silver, among other things. I hear they're also using bonds as well as collateral for their stable coins. There's not a lot of stable coins on the market. Uh, so it'll be very exciting to have uh, this stable coin hit the market as well. And I also think that if you are a platform if you are a responsible you know, uh, employer, 
uh, if you are an employer that pays in cryptocurrency, you have to be a responsible employer. You have to be a responsible platform and make sure you pay anything like wages, anything like dividends, anything like bonuses. Uh, if you're paying them in a cryptocurrency, it must be in a stable coin because it's just unfair practice to pay someone in Bitcoin um, and you're paying them, say, $1,000 for you know their wages this week and you put it in and it's $1,000, but a few hours later, Bitcoin plummets and now your employees have got $700 uh, wages. They've just lost their rent, right? And through no fault of their own. So don't be irresponsible, you know, do the right thing and pay people in a stable coin so they know that when you pay it today, it's going to be the same amount there tomorrow. And there's lots of instances where people need that particular stability. Wages, dividends, bonuses are definitely some of them. Now let's talk about our wallets. Well, you know, in the back office, we do have a wallet right and in moving forward what we're going to have is something completely different okay so very different from our back office wallet it's called our blockchain wallet and our blockchain wallet is going to have four tokens featured in it you've seen all of them tonight and we're going to have a quick look at some of them in some snapshots and also uh, you, some of you most of you in this room have registered for the exchange already for our Unitex.1 exchange. I haven't, I haven't registered yet. I know what it's like to register though, because I was on the test um, group. So I have actually enjoyed using the exchange, but congratulations to all of you. We are, you know, taking all the necessary steps. Uh, so it's good to hear that you've already registered. So we will have wallets on the exchange as well. For our four tokens, we're gonna have four wallets. Okay, so what we're going to do in future is we are going to move from our back office, not our wallets, but from our back office, specifically our CRU tab, our portfolio of crypto units. We're going to get a link for this to do this act as well, this little task. And we're going to move all our crypto units to our blockchain wallet. Okay, so there's going to be a bit of a migration over to the blockchain wallet. And uh, moving forward uh, from your blockchain wallet, when you want to buy or sell on the exchange, you will move from the blockchain wallet, you'll move any one of your four tokens over to the exchange. And what I see in future happening is that you will go, you will move your tokens to the exchange, and then from the exchange, you'll move them back to the blockchain wallet. You'll go round and round in circles, right? So I believe also moving forward that you'll spend more time in the blockchain wallet, looking at your accounts, um, you know, uh, sending your tokens from to to peer to peer as well, doing a lot of staking because all the staking happens in the blockchain wallet. So moving forward. Um, I want to give you a little strategy that I think some of you know already of how you could increase your security tokens, right? So this is what you can do moving forward, and I'll show you a, a bit later too with staking. But if you have some security tokens, you can stake those for UNTB, right? For the next year, those security tokens are not doing anything anyway. They're frozen. So if you go ahead and stake them, you will create some free UNTB. What you can do is send that UNTB to the exchange and then exchange it for some crypto units, right? Then take the crypto units and send them back to your blockchain wallet. When you get to the blockchain wallet, you swap that for the security token and then you do the process all over again. You've got some new security tokens. Now you can stake those for more UNTB. And this is a way that you can increase every single day if you wanted to, the amount of security tokens that you have in your portfolio. Isn't that great in your blockchain wallet? So that's a little hint and tip. If you didn't already know, you are welcome. Now let's take a look at the blockchain test wallet. 
Now this test wallet we used about perhaps six weeks ago. Uh, and I'm sure, I mean, we gave them a lot of instructions for improvement. Now I'm sure that this test wallet is going to change dramatically. And we never got to see the staking on the blockchain wallet either as part of the test group. So just uh, moving forward, these pictures are from the test wallet only. Uh, they gave us some balances. They're not real. Uh, they gave us about 100,000 in the different tokens, but you know, they took them all back, which was not very, not very nice. We really enjoyed having those 100,000 of each different token. Uh, so let's have a look at what you can expect to see uh, with our blockchain wallet. So this is the wallet and I think it's very, um, I love the way it looks, it's very pleasing, nicely spaced out, I can see everything, it's not cluttered in any way. Let's take a look at the dashboard, so same picture but we're just zooming in here. Uh, the dashboard here, it shows you how much power you have in your wallet if you need to purchase more of the RAM, CPU and net. Uh, you will do so using UNTB. Uh, you'll notice a QR code as well, and I thought that this was fabulous. The QR code, uh, this is the wallet number, and you'll see it starts with a 53. Now, I noticed that this wallet number was the one number for all the tokens. Now, first of all, it was, it was a bit shocking because we didn't we didn't get any lessons on how to be the testers because we were supposed to be quite uh, knowledgeable anyway. And I had my tokens on the exchange and I wanted to send my CRU and UNTB back to this wallet. Uh, but when I had, well, I was looking for my CRU wallet number to send it back, but I couldn't find it. And I thought, hang on a minute, there's only one wallet number here. And that's not right because different crypto tokens have different wallets, right? And you can't send one crypto token to another wallet because what will happen is it will disintegrate, right? So imagine that I send, you know, like three Bitcoin, I send it to um, Chris, and but I accidentally grab Chris's Litecoin address, right? So I'm sending Bitcoin, I send two Bitcoin to Chris, but I accidentally get his Litecoin wallet. What will happen is that Bitcoin will actually disintegrate into the World Wide Web. It's gone for good, right? Chris doesn't get it. I don't get a return of it. It's just completely disappeared. So it's very much like the children's toy that you see, you know, there's shapes, circles and squares and stars and triangles. Now, if you have a circle and you pick up the star shape, you cannot fit the star shape into the circle. And that's much like cryptocurrency. If it's a Bitcoin you're sending, you've got to send from your Bitcoin wallet, obviously. And the receiver has to have a Bitcoin wallet too. So back to my story, I was on the exchange. I wanted to send some CRU, but I couldn't find the CRU wallet number. And I thought, now hang on a second, there's only one wallet number here. That couldn't be right. So what I did is I just tested it. And I just sent two crypto units from the exchange back to this crypto wallet and uh, the blockchain wallet. And it actually worked. And I thought, ha, huh, okay. So I did the same thing with UNTB. I used the same wallet number and it actually moved. And then I realized, oh, wow, look at what the company have done here. They know that it is going to be a struggle for our community to remember four different wallet numbers. And so what they've done is they've managed to do very clever, never heard of it ever before, uh, that the four tokens use the same wallet number, right? They use the same wallet number. So that is a massive relief because I did worry about that. I worried about our partners sending CRU to another partner or UNTB and getting the, the wallets crossed up and then losing it. So I believe that the company have done a fantastic job here to make sure that at least our crypto blockchain wallets have got the same wallet number. So these are the four tokens that we have at the moment. Believe you me, in, in the future, we're going to have so many more uh, tokens that we, uh, it's all going to be squashed up on this particular page. 
Right now we have four and they all have their own little section. And you can see in the middle there, they have gray buttons. So I think it's quite foolproof because if you look at the CRU, there are three gray buttons. Right, you can only do one of three things. You either send it to the exchange, or you're either exchanging it, you're either staking it, or you're either sending it. Uh, when you go to the next segment, the security token, you can either stake it or send it. UNTB, again, you can either stake that or you can send it. Uh, UNTB staking is a little bit different. We haven't really discussed a lot about it. But if you stake UNTB, you get some voting rights. And voting rights is where we, you know, remember those delegates I talked about, the 21 uh, delegates, the block producers? This is who you will be voting for, who gets to produce our blocks or who gets to validate all of our transactions. With USDU, one option there, one circle, you can send it. So moving forward, what are the options that we have with our different tokens? Uh, now, before we look at that, remember I was going over the uh, four-year period, right? The four-year unlocking period with you. From when you first acquire your security token, we went through the process and I talked about how it's frozen for one year and then every 30 days you'll get one percent two percent three percent four years in total right that is only for the first 35 billion security token okay the first 35 billion security token that are acquired either by you converting them from your CIU or you from buying them from the UG pay uh, back office tab, you will enjoy a four year unlocking period uh, before you have all of those security tokens, um, you know, in your wallet that are absolutely unlocked. The last 45 billion security token will go into a 10 year unlocking period. Okay, so if this is very important to you that you have all your portfolio unlocked in the shortest possible time, make sure that you acquire your security tokens early. You know, please don't leave it too late. I think you in about maybe, and this is just a guess, three to four months, uh, this 35 billion will probably be completed. So I don't think it's gonna happen in the first week or two. Uh, but four years unlocking, if that's important to you, make sure you do that sooner rather than later. Because the last 45 billion, once 35 billion are out, the, the last 45 billion will be released over a 10-year period. So we have a four-year period, and then we have a 10-year period of, of unlocking. Okay, now when I look at that, I see that the company want to give the shorter unlocking period to the community. When I see 35 billion, I see our community. The 35 billion, that represents what's already sold in the back office now. And it represents the free gifts, the 5 billion worth of free gifts, uh, part of the staking and th 3 billion for the staking, 2 billion for the um, free gifts for December. That is our community. That first part there, the 35 billion rep represents our community, the people that started this whole security token project, right? So we are going to enjoy the shorter lock unlocking period. The 45 billion represents all the other people, you know, all the other people that are going to come in after all our hard work is done and enjoy purchasing a security token without all the blood, sweat and tears. Uh, they are the ones that are going to have a 10 year unlocking period. Okay, so converting CRU to the security token, how can we do this? Uh, in the blockchain wallet, very simple. You just put the amount in the first box and then it will uh, calculate automatically and show you how many world crypto units you would get the security token. Then you just press the button, the blue button to confirm it. And right now, you can swap one CRU for one security token, 
right? So one for one swap for 12 months, right? After 12 months, it will be swapped according to the market value of those two tokens. So how do we convert? How do we get the security token, right? Two ways. You can either purchase it from the back office or you can convert or swap your CRU. Now, which CRU can you use? Any of them. You can use your unlock CRU and you can use your lock CRU. So we were very fortunate uh, that when the company had discussions that they decided to also allow those that are locked to enjoy the conversion as well. So WCRU from both of your crypto units, either unlocked or locked. Isn't that fabulous? Now transferring. Transferring is quite simple. You put an amount in the very first box, the amount of tokens you want to transfer. And then you need to, in the second box, it says username to receive the tokens. Uh, you get the wallet number of the person and you put it in that second box, right? And then a memo is just like a confirmation number uh, that you will be able to get on the blockchain as well. And you will put that memo number in the third box and then press send. Okay, so remember the person that's receiving any of the tokens you send must have a blockchain wallet. Right, a crypto unit blockchain wallet. So let's look at transferring peer to peer. First of all, remember the receiver has to have a crypto unit blockchain wallet. Um, don't 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 say to someone, "Oh, I'll send you some crypto units," and then take their Bitcoin wallet number. Um, now, why would we send peer to peer? Why would we transfer peer to peer? Perhaps. Uh, in our community, you know someone that's selling a product or a service, maybe you know someone that owns a restaurant and you have a negotiation with them and say, hey, you know what, Charles, I'm coming down to the Gold Coast to your restaurant tonight. And then Charles says, okay. And then you, and then you say, look, can I pay with crypto units? Yeah, sure, of course you can. Give me, you know, have dinner and just, just pay me 200 crypto units, right? So there may be some sort of negotiation between partners as to what they have that you might want, right? They may have a product or service. You know, they may sell something at home that you want. Maybe they have a TV they don't want anymore. So you can negotiate with anyone in our community and then you can send your tokens there. Also, perhaps we have family members or groups of people, um, groups of family members uh, sports clubs, things like that, that have bought a big package for the whole club together. And now they're just dispersing it between the different parts of the club, right? Maybe the junior club and maybe the seniors, something like that. Or perhaps with the family members, uh, parents may have bought a big package and now they are going to start sending all the uh, crypto units or tokens out to the different siblings in that family. So lots of reasons why you would want to transfer peer to peer. Okay, so what can we transfer? Let's look at our tokens. The first one up, unlock CRU. Yes, you can transfer that from peer to peer, from you to a friend. Uh, let's look at the next token down. It's um, blue. Maria said if they're frozen or locked, make the color blue so they can people can tell. And that's what we've done. So locked CRU, you cannot send that peer to peer. Also the WCRU, that's frozen uh, and that cannot be sent as well. That would be frozen for 365 days. So that can't go anywhere. Now the UNTB and USDU, those ones are really simple. They're always unlocked. So yes, they can be sent anywhere. So certainly you can send those two and transfer those two peer to peer as well. Now, in terms of the exchange, we can transfer from our blockchain wallet to the exchange, but which tokens can we transfer? Again, the unlock CRU, yes, we can transfer that one to the exchange. Lock CRU, the blue one, we cannot send that. It's not moving, it's locked. So it can't go anywhere. 
as well as a security token, WCIU. That one's also still frozen, still in its frozen state. So that's not going anywhere. You can't send that to the exchange either. And again, the two lucky tokens down the bottom, the UNTB and the USDU, always unlocked. So they get a free pass. They can be sent to the exchange as well. Now let's talk about crew stake. There's going to be a couple of different staking options on the blockchain. Because currently we have crew stake. If you're staking right now, like I am, uh, currently in the back office, it's available, right? Right to today. And uh, they even had some released CRU out last week. So for those of you who haven't done any crew stake for a while, go and have a look at your portfolio. And you'll see that last week you would have had some more released CRU as well. Um, if you qualify for them, that is. Now, right now in the back office, we enjoy crew staking periods of one month to three years. Now, moving forward, when crew stake migrates to the blockchain wallet, we won't be doing the staking in the back office anymore. So they will all be stopped, right? All the staking will be stopped uh, by the company in the back office just before we are going to move to the blockchain. Now, if you've got some staking in the back office right now, I mean, I would uh, like a recommendation uh, is to say to you to keep it staked because there's nothing else that you'll see how you can do at the moment. It's um, There's no other option. There's no internal exchange there. So there's nothing you can do. So uh, you might as well put it to work, right? That's definitely what I'm doing. And I'm not going to stop it because if I stop it, um, it's going to be recalculated minus 75%. Uh, so let's say, for example, I've been staking 10,000 crypto units. And up to date, I have 1,000 in crypto unit rewards. If I was to go and stop that package today, they would recalculate and minus 75%. So I would lose 750 you know, I mean, I accumulated them for free, but then they'd, they'd be gone and I'd only be left with 250. So for me, it makes sense to leave it there and let the company actually stop um, the staking. So three things that you really must know about crew stake. Once you get crew stake and UNTB stake fixed in your mind, um, this is going to be very helpful for you on your blockchain wallet. So what are the three things that we must know about crew stake? First of all, it's in the name, CRU, right? The number one thing is it's CRU is deposited and CRU is the reward, right? So CRU deposited and CRU is the reward. The second thing you have to know is it's unlocked CRU only, okay? So you use unlocked CRU and you get back as a reward, unlocked CRU as well. Now, for 36 months, uh, for the first six months, you are on a stand down. And for the last 30 months, you get 8%. 4% is unlocked and given to you. And the other 4% is also unlocked, but it's held back for you until the end of the term. And the third thing you need to know about crew stake is there are set time frames and they are locked in. Right now in the back office, you can go ahead and unlock all of those except the three-year option, the 36-month option. But moving forward, all of the options, all of the set time frames will be locked in. Once you lock into it, uh, say, for example, three-month period, you cannot go and stop that staking. It is locked in for that time frame. And also moving forward, the one month option in the blockchain wallet won't be available anymore. Okay, so it will only be three months up to 36 months. So that's crew stake. So as long as you know that, know those three rules about crew stake, uh, this will help you understand it more when you're doing your staking again in the blockchain wallet. Now let's look at UNTB stake, very, very different from crew stake. 
what can you get from staking um, tokens and, and to get your NTB, right? Your NTB stake. Which tokens can we stake in order to get our UNTB? First of all, the security token. And again, it's in its frozen state. Uh, so let's go ahead and color that one blue. You can stake the frozen security token to get UNTB as a reward. Also, unlock CRU. You can also stake that as well and get UNTB as a reward. Now, remember, UNTB is going to have a starting price of one cent on the exchange when it does open up. So for me, this is a very lucrative time to also purchase it. I know we can do staking and we can get some free UNTB, but you can also purchase it if you wanted to at that very, very low price. Now, characteristics of UNTB stake. There are no set time frames. So unlike cruise stake, you don't have to set uh, choose a time frame. You can stake something at nine o'clock in the morning. You can stake some unlock CRU. And then you say to yourself, well, you know what? I don't think I want that stake. I think I want to sell it in a couple of days. So then you would stop the staking. Now, when you stop the staking, there is a 72 hour cooling off period. OK, so this is helps, uh, especially with people during a panic sale. And also another thing that it stops people from doing is staking now and then stop staking 10 seconds. 10 seconds later, then staking again, then unstaking, then staking again, and, and unstaking. Uh, you imagine 20, 30, 40,000 people doing that every day. It will overload the server, right? So we have to put some measures in place so people are not just randomly pressing buttons all day because they can. Um, now, in terms of your rewards, on the white paper, there's a little bit of a guide there as to what you could expect. And remember, there's a caveat with that as well, that it is just a guide. It's just a, an example. Uh, there's no promises there. But this, this is a fact, though. 6.912 million UNTB will be made every 24 hours in the first month, right? And this amount will be shared pro rata to every staked token. So if there were only two of us that very first day and we both had perhaps 100 tokens each and there was only those tokens that were staked, uh, the two people that were doing that staking would both receive over 3 million UNTB each for that first day. Okay, so it's pro rata. So it depends how many tokens are staked they will get equal share of the UNTB. Now, every month, the amount of UNTB that is created will decrease by 135%. So you can just go ahead and uh, I'll do that on the calculator. Every day, it's 6.912 million, 6912000. Now, if we minus 1.35%, uh, that means we minus and we are left with 6.8 million, right? So 6.818 million and every month it will decrease by that much. So 10 years, there won't be any more UNTB being made. Stake frozen, uh, the security token for UNTB, very simple. You just put in the first box the amount of the security token that you want to stake and press the blue button that says stake WCRU. Now, if for whatever reason you want to unstake, you just put the amount you want to unstake and it doesn't have to be the same amount that you first staked. Uh, you could have staked 100 and then maybe tomorrow you want to unstake 10, right? So it can be a different amount. You just put that in the second box and then confirm it by pressing unstake WCRU. Remember that there is, for UNTB stake, the 72-hour calling-off period until you can get access to those tokens again. 
Now, registration 2020. Yes, I'm envious of three quarters of you in this room because you've already registered. Uh, I'm going to be registering for my link soon. Grab the link, register, then pass the link on to your first downline so they can register on the exchange as well. Uh, this is what the exchange looks like. It's called Unitex, U-N-I-T unit, which is our, uh, our normal currency that the company has been using for nine years. And EX for exchange, and then dot one, which is dot O N E. If you want to go and have a look at it, if you haven't registered yet, uh, number one, register for your account. Number two, do KYC, which is your verification documents. Uh, three, you can deposit and start trading, but we are asking you to do this. Number one, register for your account. And we want to squeeze something in the middle there, which is grab your link once you register and pass it on to your first downline. So let's look at our roadmap. We're going to start with number eight, which is registration on the unit exchange on Unitex, uh, approximately 1,000 people per day. I think they can. They said that they can verify. And then, like I said, we'll go right back up the top, all the staking in the back office will finish. You'll receive your last percentage of your uh, uh, rewards for your CRU. You'll be given a link to the blockchain wallet. Okay, so this is different from the exchange, very different from the exchange. And then you can transfer all your CRU from the back office portfolio to your blockchain wallet. After about a week, uh, when most of the people have done, most of our community have transferred their CRU to blockchain, then um, they will start the emissions, they will start creating UNTB. Now, they won't disperse it out to partners yet, they'll just start creating it. Now, inside your blockchain wallet, you will be able to do the two different types of staking, the CRU stake and the UNTB stake, and they'll allow about a week for people to put their staking in. Now, after that, then they will start dispersing the UNTB, and this is how you can create some passive income for yourself. Now, the company said that they are following in the footsteps of Binance, which is one of the most popular exchanges in the world. And Binance started with two markets uh, when they first opened up. So we're going to start with two markets as well, uh, CRU to the stablecoin and UNTB to the stablecoin as well. Uh, this is great because this lets me know that the company's really concerned and wants to make sure that if our community, if our partners want liquidity, then they've got it, right? So you can liquidate your CIU if you want, and you can liquidate your UNTB if you want. And also the other way around, if you want to buy some more CIU, and if you want to buy some more UNTB, uh, you're able to. So let me also tell you about Binance. They have their own uh, blockchain token uh, for their exchange, their own exchange token, should I say, and it's called BNB, you know, B for Bravo, November Bravo, right, look it up and have a look at its charting for the last three years, but when they first uh, brought it onto the market, they allowed the community to buy it at three cents per token, a month later, it entered the Binance exchange at 10 cents per token, so it jumped by seven cents, uh, per token, and now it's approximately $42 uh, on the um, exchange here in Australia. Now, if you had bought $100 worth of those tokens just three years ago, you'd have a portfolio of about $120,000 US dollars worth uh, of BNB uh, in your portfolio. So very exciting. Uh, the fact that we, as a community, uh, we can earn free UNTB, but we can also you know what, nothing's stopping you from going and buying a hundred dollars worth of UNTB to any of those partners who are going to receive it for free and just sell it for one cent, right? Uh, Maria says, Don't sell it for one cent, wait for two or three days for it to be, you know, three or four cents. You know, it'll give you so much more value. But partners will do what they want to do, and we will reap the rewards by snapping it up for one cent. For me, it's like 
the crypto unit program stage one all over again. So very exciting. Now, every month, uh, the exchange will add one more market. So for example, on the next month, they could add the Bitcoin market. The month after that, they could add the Ethereum market. Uh, it makes sense because imagine if they added five markets in one go and then something happened to the exchange, you know, it got overloaded. You're not able to pinpoint which uh, coin could be causing the problem. So I think that's a great idea as well. Uh, now, uh, partners, that is the end of the presentation. Let's stop 8.09 and break into Q&A. And I will give you the option to...